Well, as I mentioned earlier, Labor is tying itself in knots over the Israel-Gaza war with yo-yoing policies and mixed messaging. Yesterday, the Australian Jewish News called Penny Wong's endorsement of a Palestinian statehood as a betrayal. The minister was no clearer on her position when asked today. Joining me now is Alex Rivchen, Executive Counsel of Australian Jury, co-CEO. Alex, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Has there Thank been a change that. in Labor's policy this week, in your view? Well, not necessarily. I mean, the Labor Party has for a long time toyed with this notion of unilaterally recognising a Palestinian state. We, for our part, have made it abundantly clear to the Foreign Minister, to the Prime Minister and in the public domain that we think it's very poor policy. But what is particularly troubling with this particular announcement is not the substance, which really had nothing new about it, but it was more the timing of it. The fact that at a time when 134 Israelis remain captive in the most horrendous, terrifying circumstances imaginable, when the war continues to rage, when Hamas remains a factor in the Middle East, to be talking about long-term political solutions, to be talking about a two-state solution and recognizing Palestine, uh, it seems hopelessly misguided, to be honest. And to be clear, we support a two-state solution. That has always been our position. But a two-state solution has to come about by the establishment of a genuine, viable, peaceful Palestinian state, not merely by proclaiming that such a state exists when it doesn't. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, it's just gone six months since this war began. Hamas still has uh, captives. We don't know how many are alive. We don't know how many are dead. And then for the federal government to come out like this, do Jewish Australians feel betrayed in their own country? You know, speaking to members of, of my community, they're taking this pretty harshly. You know, they, they do feel badly let down. They feel that this should be a time when the Australian government should be showing understanding and compassion for Israelis and what they're going through, and that they should use their voice and their platform in the international sphere to call for the surrender of Hamas and enter this war and the release of these hostages. I mean, I've had the opportunity to meet with some of the released captives in the first round of, of exchanges. Um, I've met with the families of those who are still captive. They are going through hell every second, and the Jewish world stands with them completely. And we want to see our government in this country doing what it can to pressure the Qataris and Iran to do a deal, to release the hostages, to bring this war to an end and allow people to go back to their lives and rebuild. And then we can have a period of hopefully peace and reconstruction and movement towards a lasting peace and a two-state solution, but not now. No, absolutely not. Fair comment. Also this week, we saw former Defence Force Chief Air Marshal Mark Binskin appointed as Special Australian Advisor on Israel's probe into the killing of aid workers in Gaza. Australia is the only country to make such an appointment. Was Australia right to go down this track? Well, it's a somewhat bewildering decision. As you said, it's sort of without precedent. I mean... When this horrific mistake occurred, and it is horrific and no one denies that, the Israelis very quickly accepted full responsibility. The president and the prime minister issued sincere, heartfelt apologies. They established an independent group to uh, investigate and determine how this happened, which resulted in interim decisions to sack two senior officers, censure others. Israel has said this is just the beginning of the measures they intend to take. And ultimately, Israel has much to gain by determining how these mistakes occur and to develop better protocols and operating procedures so that they don't occur in future. This is not the first incident of misidentification and tragic death by accidental fire. We saw earlier on in the war three Israeli hostages shot by Israeli commandos who were there to free them. We've seen a large proportion of Israeli military casualties also as a result of misidentification and what's called friendly fire, accidental fire. So the Israelis have shown themselves entirely willing to investigate and bring about accountability for this. So this step of appointing a special envoy is, in my view, without precedent. It's not something which I think we would do with any other allied country, and I'm not sure why we're doing it in this case. Alex Rivchen, always good to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this evening. Thank you so much, Danica.